Well, hello everyone. My name is uh, Gary Zepatichny, and I'm a member of the Clovis, New Mexico uh, Astronomy Club here in Clovis, New Mexico. And, to, and I have a presentation for you on the solar and lunar imaging uh, uh, done between May and July 2023. But before I really get into this, I want to discuss, uh, first off, uh, as a lot of the information in here shows solar observing and the fact that we have in October an annular solar eclipse and April of next year an actual, uh, the full-blown solar eclipse, uh, I want to discuss uh, viewing the sun safely. Uh, no one should ever view the sun uh, without proper eye protection equipment. Uh, the damage to your eyes that could occur would be permanent. Uh, if you have any questions regarding safe viewing of the sun, reach out to your local astronomy club uh, or search online for safe viewing options. And if you have any questions about what you find online, you know, you just want to uh, double check that with uh, folks that, like myself, that uh, are view the sun uh, with special equipment all the time. Um, you can reach out to the Clovis New Mexico Astronomy Club Facebook page by looking up the contact information uh, through the page's intro and bio section. And if you're using a smartphone, the club's contact information will be in the post under details. And I've got a couple examples here how you can ease, more easily f find our contact information. So if you're using a PC or Mac, uh, just look at our uh, page's name and look into the intro where you see the area that's highlighted and our contact information will be below that. <clears throat> if you're using a smartphone, um, you'll see it, you'll see post and details and our contact information will be below uh, details. You could always uh, place a comment for any questions that you might have uh, as well. So during this time frame, I wasn't able to accomplish any deep space imaging. And as a matter of fact, the last uh, deep space imaging I was able to accomplish was in uh, the beginning of April. And we've had a lot of weather then uh, that just made it uh, really difficult to set up for that, for this type of astrophotography, but for solar system imaging, um, you don't need perfect conditions, um, and it's just easier to set up uh, using an Altaz mount than it is uh, an EQ mount. But during this uh, uh, solar imaging uh, that I was able to accomplish, I used a StellarView Access 80 millimeter refractor telescope as well as the ZWO ASI 174 mono, cam uh, mono camera. A white light solar filter was used to capture sunspot activity and the Daystar filters quark chromosphere filter was used to capture deep surface and prominent uh, details, prominence details. Uh, lunar imaging was accomplished using the same telescope. However, the ZWO ASI 585 color camera uh, was used as it provides exceptional detail uh, using this specific refractor. So we're going to show you uh, white light solar imaging and discuss uh, the details that you see when you're looking at uh, these type of images. So for here, um, May 28th, uh, I was able to capture uh, uh, sunspots. Uh, it shows good activity uh, around the sunspots. You also see uh, some surface detail uh, and, and these areas around the sunspots that are just a little bit lighter, a little brighter. And so let's talk about what we're seeing here. So when you're using a white light solar filter, you're actually looking at uh, the, solar, the photosphere, which is underneath the chromosphere. You can't see the chromosphere using a white light solar filter because you need more filtering uh, to allow you to see that. But what you can make out 
um, or granules or these little small spots that you see on here. Okay, so uh, granules um, are, or cells within the photosphere of the sun, um, they come up as convection currents rising from the convection layer of the sun. And an average size granule is about 930 miles across. And uh, interestingly enough, these granules uh, dissipate after 8 to 10 minutes or so. Now the sunspots are intense magnetic storms inhibiting the convection uh, process and are considerably cooler than their surrounding areas. Now you, you might have noticed these lighter area uh, zigzaggedy lines around the sunspots. These are brighter yet hotter regions formed around the sunspots. And uh, sometimes they're even confused with uh, flaring or, or flares from the surface of the sun. And uh, I also uh, wanted to point out that when you're looking at uh, the sunspot, the outer area that you see is the sunspot penumbra and the darkened area of the sunspot is the sunspot umbra. On May uh, 29th, um, more sunspot activity. Uh, the uh, facula is a little bit better defined in this image in and around these uh, sunspots and even on the edge of the sun that you can see here as well. On uh, July 3rd, I was able to capture uh, some interesting sunspot activity. Uh, I had wanted to capture it while, uh, if, before the sun had rotated so that you could catch it over in this area, but it just wasn't meant to be due to weather. <laughs> All right, so on July 23rd, I actually caught a plane in my imaging. It's the first time I've ever caught an aircraft in my imaging going back to uh, 2012. And the image on your right is just a processed uh, version of this. Um, and um, seeing conditions weren't great. In fact, uh, shortly after these images were taken, I, I, I was hampered with uh, wind for the rest of my time uh, trying to image the sun. I was able to do some uh, lunar imaging during this time, and let's take a look at the results. So on June 24th, uh, the Clovis uh, New Mexico Astronomy Club set up in front of the Clovis Carver Library uh, parking lot, and we had our scopes and cameras uh, trained on the moon. And uh, this is a very uh, popular event during this, the early spring, uh, middle of the summer, and also in October. But this is uh, showing the moon in its phase, and you've got the Terminator line here, and it shows great contrast, of course, between the, 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 the side that's uh, getting the sunlight as well as the side that's uh, darkened. And I just love details of the craters that you see along the terminating line. And what a great view it is through uh, telescopes of any size, actually. On July 4th, I managed to capture the Buck full moon. And here are three different uh, varying views of the full moon. And uh, as you're looking at these, uh, which one is your favorite? So next up, we're going to show uh, the H-alpha imaging using the uh, chromosphere filter. This was taken on May 28th and uh, shows pretty good uh, chromosphere uh, surface detail, as well as, uh, of course, the prominences in uh, back here. And this area, and as well as this area, now each of these areas are bigger than the Earth. Uh, 
on uh, the next day, I was able to cat do more uh, chromosphere uh, uh, imaging, and I got to love the, uh, the the detail of the uh, sunspots and the uh, magnetic interaction of the surface. And over here is a flare. Now on the July 23rd, after those uh, initial uh, solar images was taken with the aircraft in it, um, the wind really picked up. And this is a 200 frame uh, excerpt out of a thousand frames. Um, and this is a loop. It's going to just do go through 200 frames and kind of jerk back to the beginning. Um, but it gives you an idea uh, what the wind was doing uh, for my imaging. However, um, as you'll see, uh, you, you'll be able to see an H-alpha view of the sunspots and surface that actually came out pretty well. And here they are. Great detail of, around the, uh, the sunspots here and here. You can see the magnetic interaction on the surface. And uh, this is actually one of my favorite images of the sunspots and surface detail. Here wasn't quite as nice. Um, you got the sunspot here and some, some interaction here. And on this image you have uh, prominence um, on uh, the top of the sun. Uh, you can actually see uh, some activity here, and uh, the next the next images will show you uh, further down on the left. Really good uh, view of the prominence activity um, on this part of the sun. Uh, good surface detail. Uh, this particular um, object, the prominence here, is is bigger than the Earth. But down below, uh, on, the, on the bottom side of the sun, we actually had more uh, prominence activity. Um, you've got good uh, uh, sunspots here, as well as the magnetic uh, interaction on the surface. And it's really good. However, because of the wind, I wasn't able to get uh, this part of the uh, sun. Get, I just couldn't get the detail uh, out of it. Um, uh, you can kind of see uh, some of that surface detail is not quite as clear. So in this uh, particular uh, uh, image, it shows the uh, my 80 millimeter uh, refractor telescope with the um, uh, white light solar filter mounted in the front. Uh, it also shows the camera connected to the laptop using the blue USB cable. And all this is mounted on the Celestron Evolution mount uh, with an external uh, lithium battery pack. And I always take that out, even though um, this mount can, does come with an internal lithium battery. Uh, when I'm out uh, for extended time, I like having a, an external battery pack for the mount. Um, below uh, this uh, table here, there's a, a, a Blue Eddy EB70. Uh, which supplies power to the laptop. Now this particular tub um, blocks wind and also uh, blocks a lot of the uh, stray light, which makes it easier for me to uh, see the display as well as achieve um, better focus. Um, as bright as it is, uh, as you can tell, this is this is in the morning time. I finished up the session about uh, 11 o'clock, and I was out out there initially about 7:30. So um, I've started using uh, this tub when I saw a video um, years ago from Astro Backyard. So it was a great idea, and it has served me well over the years using using such a tub. Well, folks, that ends uh, the presentation uh, from for May to and through July uh, imaging. Uh, I hope you have found it entertaining and interesting. 
Um, I will be releasing a, a video on the remaining of our outreach events at Nethook Park, Oasis State Park, and um, the Clovis Carver Public Library. Um, so stay tuned for that for that video as well. If you uh, like the content or have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments, uh, and uh, I'll get back to it and respond to them uh, as soon as I can. Uh, Hope all of you uh, enjoy uh, looking at the sky and uh, clear skies. Take care. Bye-bye.